This is round four, I think, of my playthrough of Brigandoom, the scenario in the Perils of the Lost Coast adventure deck that was bundled with the Rise of the Rune Lords box of the Pathfinder adventure card game. We've so far narrowed down the location of the villain. We know that the location is in the woods. He's the top card. We have that intel. And I was thinking about this between sessions, and I realized that the smart thing to do would be for Kira to travel to the waterfront, Harsk to travel to the wooden bridge, for her to basically hold down the waterfront. So to temporarily close, to close this location temporarily, you summon and defeat a bandit henchman, which I think she's done before, or, or if not, I, I feel like she could do it. So she could close that. Harsk could actually close this. And then he could go to the woods, face the villain, and we'd be, we'd be at the end game. And actually, now that I'm saying it aloud, I realize that they may as well just both close this location. Send her to hold down the waterfront. Send him to go to the, to the uh, woods to face down the villain. That's what we'll do. Okay. So first and foremost, it's her turn. We took over a timer card. She explores and encounters a sneak. The difficulty to defeat the sneak is increased by the adventure deck number. There is none. Before the encounter, succeed at a wisdom or perception eight check or discard one card of your choice. I don't want to discard a card at all, actually. Her wisdom's pretty good, though. She's a cleric. Her wisdom is a d12. She has no perception bonus. But, um, so a d12 for what? It's a pretty high check, right? Uh, perception 8. Eight, or w wisdom or perception eight. Okay, so it's a d12 to get an eight. She got a two. It's hilarious. She's only she only rolls twos, so that's that's predictable. So she does have to discard something now, and I think what she's going to discard is a it is her holy water, because oh wait, I need something divine in my hand. Yes, I have stuff divine. That's divine. So yeah, I think she'll she'll discard her holy water. This is a benefit against undead, and while I, I'm sure there's something undead around, uh, she has an inherent cleric ability to add a die against undead. So I feel like that's it's nice to have, not essential. So she's discarded that. Now she has to go to battle against a creature with nine AC. Well, she can. It, she is the only location a character at her location, so she can reveal this card to add a 1 to her combat check. So really, we're up against an 8. Her strength is a d6, and she's got a natural bonus to her melee of a plus 2. So really, we're only going up against a 6. I say only as if though a 6 on a d6 for Kira is just something that'll just happen naturally. I don't have faith in that. I mean, Saren Ray's a great goddess, but I'm, I'm not impressed so far with uh, Kira's rolling. So, Potion of Vision is going to get recharged by Harsk so that he can aid Kira from afar and give her a little bit of a bonus, a d4, for her combat. So she, we're looking for a 8 minus 2, so a 6 across a d6 and a d4. So she rolls a d4 and gets a 2. And I guess she's going to get a 2 on this stupid d6, but I'm going to switch it up, use the other d6 in hopes of getting a 4, for instance. So that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, plus that 1 from her armor. She actually defeats the sneak. The cleric's faith comes through. Cool. That's great. That's really good. 
That's just a monster, that's not a henchman. So the location is still open. But we didn't have to... Well, we did have to discard something, so that's too bad. I guess what I'll do then... No, I'm not going to do that. You know why? Here's the thing. So, we know that the villain is in this deck. There aren't as many cards here as I thought. I'm a little bit deflated. But I, my, my... Oh, here's, here's the thing. This is the deck that essentially I do not intend to clear out. We know the villain isn't here. So we're just going to hold down that deck. And ideally, if everything goes smoothly, we're going to kill the villain because you won't be able to escape here. So we'll never have to look into the waterfront at all. Which is really, really fortunate because I stacked that thing full of Skulls and Shackles cards, which are almost sure to kill both Harsk and Kira. Okay, so I am not conserving the timer deck. I am just letting things happen one turn at a time. Oh, Kira's got her mace back. There we go. Now I'm feeling better. Turn over. A, ble a, a blessing card, the timer deck, and Harsk is going to come help Kira. I forgot one thing about this, is that he's actually more help to her from afar. For instance, when he just helped her from afar. But I guess we'll just, for now, he can at least, he can at least explore, which he'll do. Scurvy zombie. Ooh, henchman. That means we get to close this location. That's what we wanted. 13 is a pretty severe... That's a pretty heavy AC, though. All right. Um, I don't think there's anything in here that I need to know about. So this is a scurvy zombie. Harsk is not really equipped for combat, to be honest. Um, but his best shot at this is going to be, well, his best shot would be to discard this card for a bonus. So maybe 13. What if he, what if he discarded this short bow? He would, he would be rolling a D8. A D8, where'd my D8 go? A D8 plus a d6, and then if he discarded the short bow, he would get an, another a, a d4 in addition. And of course, this is all dex and ranged, so he gets his plus 3. So really, he'd be looking at a 10. A 10 across those die. I, I feel like that's, that's what I gotta do. So if he's proficient, he can discard. So he's discarding his short bow. 10 across these die. Let's roll the small die first to see what happens. A three. Okay, it's not bad. So we're looking for a total of ten on these blue die. So that's a three. And then the D6, five, so that's eight. As long as he does not roll a one on this D8, he's defeated the scurvy zombie, and we get to attempt to close this location. He rolled an eight. So he defeats the scurvy zombie. That's good. That's really good. That's the kind of performance we need when the villain shows up. So Scurvy Zombie goes away, and now we have to see what we have to do to, to close this location. Succeeded a Dex Stealth 6. He doesn't have Stealth, but he has, of course, his Dex is a D8. He doesn't have a Blessing to expend to give him a bonus. So he's just rolling a d8, and we're just hoping for a 6, or a 7, or an 8. And he got an 8. We closed the location. That's brilliant. So that is two locations closed. Two monsters that we didn't have to fight. That's always a nice feeling. And, um... Harsk and Kira can now... Kira can go hold down the fort at the waterfront to make sure that our villain doesn't escape there, and Harsk can go to the woods to have a little bit of a face-off with the villain. But before we do that, well, before anything happens, I think uh, he gets to 
draw back up to 5. And maybe what I'll have Kira do is some healing or something. I don't know. Or maybe give him a, a blessing card. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll give him a blessing card so that he can add a blessing card to his villain attempt. That would be good. That would be smart. Either way, all that will happen in the next session. It's very exciting, though. I, can't, I can hardly wait. So thanks for watching. Uh, let's kill Jabral Risky next time.